Now, we are here to talk about your book, uh, The Back Mechanic, which is uh, your latest book. And we are going to go through, as I mentioned in, in my short introduction, we'll kind of look at, uh, work our way through the book, not necessarily chapter by chapter, but we'll certainly pull um, sort of a, a client's journey or a patient's journey um, out of the book to give them a, a taste of the information that's in it. Um, but I do recommend that whoever is listening to this and gets some value from uh, these questions and these answers and, and the videos themselves, that they do go to backfitpro.com and uh, purchase the book because they'll get a lot more from the book itself um, than the than the videos um, that we're doing uh, today. So in chapter one, uh, you talk about uh, myth busting and separating fact from fiction. And if I'm not mistaken, there are about 18 different myths that you talk about in here, all the way from uh, back pain is linked to having tight hamstrings to lying in bed is good for my back all the way to uh, a herniated disc spells the end of a person's athletic career. So it's quite a broad spectrum. But what I'd like to ask you about is one of the, the first ones that you wrote about, and it's backs can be rehabilitated in 6 to 12 weeks. And me, myself, working with people with back pain, that is a common um, understanding that they have, and it's very much uh, sort of educating them a little bit more about the back and a little bit more about the rehabilitation process that helps them understand maybe a wider answer to that. So could you tell us um, a little bit more about the common time frames that you've found and maybe what are some common threads that people who have rehabilitated their back quicker, what some of the common threads might be between those people? Yes. Well, first of all, this notion that backs uh, heal within six to 12 weeks is really driven by the medical insurance uh, industry who pay for back pain uh, disability. And they based it, unfortunately, on the healing time of rodent muscle. Uh, which heals very quickly, believe it or not. So it had very little to do with actual uh, back pain patients. In fact, it had nothing to do with with them. So uh, there are uh, th th there there are features of back pain that occlude uh, people's perceptions. For example, uh, discogenic back pain tends to be very episodic. Um, a patient would report, oh, they bent a certain way, they got a stab of back pain, uh, they uh, had to really uh, lay off things or their back might have been locked up for a few days and then it slowly dissipated and they were quite fine again in two weeks. They would believe that they had healed. Um, in fact, they have not. The mechanism there is usually um, uh, a disc bulge that um, because of movement patterns and they may have set themselves up by doing too much gardening or too much sitting or something like that pressurized the nucleus to work through some delaminated collagen that had already been existing in their back but um, those combinations of mechanics caused uh, the nucleus just to seep through, trigger the pain and the, the, the very rapid um, inflammatory uh, response. And it takes um, a few days to, to wind it all down. So uh, what I'm saying there is that the person was actually in control, but they didn't know it. No one had ever shown them what the mechanism of that acute attack was. They might have simply been just bending forward and flushing the toilet, and they wonder how on God's green earth did they have such um, a, a disabling week or two afterwards. Um, if they learned what the mechanism was, they could avoid it. And I've had some patients who've had that uh, description for years and they never had another episodic um, a a acute attack again. Um, so that would be a very rapid, uh, an example of a very rapid dealing with the mechanism. 
Um, but it all comes back to the patient understanding the mechanism, and that's why an assessment of their, their pain trigger is so important. But let's take another kind of patient. Say someone who has more of a compressive kind of overload. They've deadlifted too heavy, or they may have been picking up a child in an awkward position. They had a little bit of compressive damage to the end plate of their um, spines. They might may not know this, and nor do they really need to. But the point is uh, that may cause a compressive sensitivity for, for a few years. And uh, it takes that long for biology to restore their compressive load-bearing uh, ability. And, and uh, that's uh, just the, the way it is, unfortunately. And, uh, th but they need to know that eventually it will uh, wind down. So there's an example of an extremely rapid um, uh, healing time, although the tissues haven't healed, uh, that disc bulge example, that it will slowly gristle over time and become resilient to, to the, the original bending and compression mechanism again. Uh, and the other one, which was uh, purely compressive, uh, and it, it may take um, uh, uh, much, much longer. But there, the point is there's a whole host of different causes of back pain. But with an appropriate assessment, the person can get an idea of what uh, uh, mechanical uh, items such as specific motions, postures, and loads cause their pain sensitivity to grow. And then, uh, of course, they now have an understanding of how to wind them down.